All right, everybody. This is Sheets with Bobby. We switched the uh, positions here a little bit uh, to uh, deal with some tech, tech issues, but we're going to do our preview for the NFL slate, and this is going to be the start of a couple of probably follow-up videos. Um, I'm not going to be around tomorrow for the Jewish holidays, but uh, maybe Bobby and Rody will do one tomorrow. Maybe we'll have Justin on, whatever it is. Just want to give you a couple of different takes of the NFL slate. Um, I had a pretty good uh, pretty good uh, MMA slate on this past Sunday. Um, I'd like to continue continue that. And uh, we'll just start off our content, uh, I guess, with, our, with an early look. And again, I do have the projections up already. Um, and those are obviously change. And uh, that's pretty much it. Bobby, uh, any overall view of the slates before we just hit this? Uh, any overview from last week or anything before we just get, get after it? I um, got off a really good week, had a really good chance in some big tournaments and had a lot of nice scores and right back after it. Um, I don't have an, I don't have any overall thoughts on this week yet because it's too early, but I, I, I am happy to go game by game here and, and get an idea of a, sort of an outline of what we want to do. Okay. So okay, first so of all, do it. first of all, um, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, so, so I'm going to start with Pittsburgh and Buffalo and I want to give you a little bit of a disclaimer here again, for those of you that are, they're looking at the, uh, the early view of the sheets, you might find some anomalies here. I haven't quite seen how it plays out yet, but, but one of our sources, I think it's Abersim, I think they have the wrong implied team totals for this game and it's kind of filtering down to the, uh, to the projections. Like they have the team totals like 27 to 21, which is just not the case. You know, it's a 13 point spread. It's not, it's not 27 to 21. Um, so, so that, right. that's, that's going to have to be obviously adjusted. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll get that done sooner than later. So I guess the first game you have Pittsburgh against Buffalo. And as I mentioned, it's a 13 point, 13 point spread. And you have, uh, you have Kenny Pickett, you know, welcome, welcome to the NFL going to Buffalo, have a nice, good time, have good times, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, listen, listen, I mean, he could be, he could be a talent. He could end up being, being good, but they're, they're really throwing him to the wolves, but, you know, the next four starts, you know, they're giving a really, really tough matchups, but you know, that's, that's what you got to do sometimes. Uh, no, I do not think that, um, that Pickett is in, in really in play. And what's weird is that even, even considering what a tremendously difficult matchup it is for Pittsburgh, I mean, I'm still seeing Deontay Johnson showing up at least on early looks as a, really good play and i i uh man it's just a tough uh tough macro environment you know what i mean i know a top top you know receiver on the team maybe you know you have to think he's trying to look for him and all this stuff but uh, it seems like it just seems like an overall tough spot now on the other side buffalo is going to project you know to be a really good high scoring stack as they always do and it comes up to the question is you know what, what, what do they need to do you know what do they need to do to to, to beat Pittsburgh, do they need to put up 35 points? Does Josh Allen need to do whatever? Um, but for now, I'm willing to dispense with that narrative and just say that Buffalo just looks like a good stack. Um, so I'm going to start with Josh Allen and, and Stephon Diggs and say that Buffalo is in a good spot. And yes, if you play them, it's probably not the worst idea to try to run it back with 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 maybe someone like Deontay Johnson. But overall, I just think this game is just like it's just like it's just like a 31 to nothing special. Yeah, um, I guess Buffalo defense is pretty expensive, but you know that's that's a thing you could look to. Um, Kenny Pickett had a, the strangest line in his first yep. game, and he came at halftime ten for thirteen, but all three of his in, incompletions were interceptions, <laughs> and then three rushes for two touchdowns. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty unusual line. Um, I'm okay. You know, there's going to be things I like better, but I'm okay with if you want to do the Buffalo stack. I'm not personally high on that. Um, I, I like the. Uh, I like the idea of Dawson Knox still at low ownership and uh, cheap. That's what I think will happen anyway. And I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind any of the receivers for, for the George Pickens has been looked for quite a bit lately. Uh, he's had 15 targets over the last two weeks. He's a cheap option and there's going to be other value and stuff, but I, I wouldn't mind taking a little shot there. And then we just don't know how Pickett's going to, you know, roll with the other guys. Maybe, maybe he looks for Claypool a little bit more, maybe Deontay Johnson. I think they're all in, they're all in play but I'm just having them as sort of guys early in the week, no priorities. I am going to keep trying to get over the field on Dawson Knox. Cause I think he's got a lot more. I think he's got some big games in him and he just hasn't had that really big breakout game yet, but I, I do like Dawson Knox. They paid him a lot of money. Um, they're going to look for him at times. So uh, as, as long as he's 3,600, he's always going to be in my player pool at, at, at tight end. All right. Moving on to uh, chargers against Cleveland. Oh, as is, excuse me, that maybe the, maybe the best play for the Steelers is Friar Muth. Excuse me. Those are my, Thing. Sorry, Sheets. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, 
Chargers against Cleveland. This does not particularly show up as a uh, as a really good 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 game for me. Except you know b- both these running backs uh, seem to be uh, seem to be playable, and we, we talked about this last week. You know, uh, you know, uh, nobody seems to ever want to play Nick Chubb. He always seems to get it done. Now again, twenty three points in this isn't going to do it. Um, you want to know the truth. Um, but, uh, I mean, he's probably going to be a decent play. Um, Eckler looks to be a, uh, you know, one of the top running back plays on the slate. And it's interesting, you know, I, I asked you, uh, last week, what you thought of the chargers in general, and you thought they were, you know, they were going to put up points in that game, that game put up a decent amount of points. I'll tell you this, the chargers, chargers, Chargers are really bad closers, man. I mean, they really are. I mean, they. Uh, I told you, no matter what the score is, it always ends up being a close game at some point in the fourth quarter. Ah, damn. You know, I had them in one of my bigger survivor pool things, and I'm like, that was okay. I'm fine enough to sweat this one. And next thing you know, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, like yeah. they're, they're just rough like that. And that's very conducive to some high scores. But um, uh, nothing about this game is particularly great to me. You know, I, I, except for I like Eckler as running back. And I'm really not getting to either of these teams like a main team to stack or anything like that. So I'm definitely high on this game this week. Oh, let's like, go. Okay. This is one of the ones I like. And okay. and I will do it the same way as long as I can afford it with other positions. The problem is Keenan Allen coming back sort of messes thing, mix things up a little bit. But I'm happy to just play Keenan Allen and say, okay, forget about the other guys a little bit as much. Uh, we got really nice games out of Gerald Everett last week. A nice game out of uh, – really nice game out of Austin Eckler. And Mike Williams was the second leading receiver on the week with seven catches for 120 yards. Just didn't happen to get in the end zone. These receivers really didn't pay off in, in week two. And that's right, in week four. Um, but I, I like this game as a stack. And I like you could run it back with Amari or Chubb, who, by the way, I was at the game last year when these teams played. And the final score was 48 to 42. Oh, my gosh. I heard that. It was 48 45. Um, it was not, it was not 48 45. What was it? I know that for a fact. May not have been because the forty-eight forty-five from last week was the first time it had ever been forty-eight forty-five. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yep, last that was the score I got me. Yep, it was it was something like that. What I can't, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I was at the game. It was a complete shootout. Chubb went nuts. Uh, I think Njoku went nuts back at the time. Um, I I have no problem with the uh, the Chargers had trouble co- covering over the middle. I like it. I might this might be another double cheap spend at tight end week for me. Or, or, you know, if I don't get the running backs in, because I, I, I keep seeing the, you know, these receivers, but I, as of right now, I would say um, uh, of the players in the game that I like the most, I would say Eckler, Keenan Allen, if he plays, if not Mike Williams, Gerald Everett on the Chargers side and on the Brown side, I like, I, I'm interested in both Chubb and Hunt, uh, Cooper, and then Njoku might be my favorite play of, of the Chargers. Uh, maybe he lights them up completely again. But I, I I do like this game. I'm gonna attack. These are two teams that I've wanted to to both play and attack so far this year, and I'm not gonna stop when they're playing each other. Um, and and I really think Njoku has the kind of ceiling that he could be like a 5K tight end, and I still might even consider him on my list this week. So he might be my favorite play in that game. Um, but I do like the whole game, the game environment as a whole, and I like uh, you know, I, I think Cleveland's better than people think, and the Chargers have been a little bit worse, but. I think this should be a good game and I could see that it, I could see it, the, you know, if a couple things happen early. This could be a real shootout. The Chargers defense is definitely, you know, left a lot to be desired, especially down the stretch. So I, I'm into this game as, as one of my, as one of my games this week. Houston Jacksonville. So a couple of comments on this game for me, um, Houston is, uh, Houston is definitely pesky. You know, they're, 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 they, they, they never give up. They're in games. Um, and even when you think they're out of games, they come back into games. Um, and, uh, then you have Jacksonville, who, man, they they were like, you know, Philadelphia, I don't care who you are. We're going to come after you on the road. And we'll be up 14 to nothing. And then then then, <laughs> then the Eagles freaking freight train just kind of just kind of yeah, swept them up or whatever in, in the rain and the wind, which didn't certainly help. But Jacksonville's good. I mean, Jacksonville's good. And I'd like to think that this game has some potential, actually. I mean, like the, the only guys that are really showing up for me are, are is honestly Cooks. And so from a projection perspective, I, I'm not really getting to this, but I just have this feeling that this is that this game can do something. Um, you'd look at this game at all. I mean, aside from Cooks, who's, Cooks is going to show up as a good point per dollar play. Do you like anything else on this in this game? Um, so, I, I you know, they're, they're, it's not like Jacksonville's Jacksonville's defense has been really good. The, the only the only thing we're going to hold against them is that the Eagles got hot and put up 29 on them. Right. Um, I don't know, man. They, their, their defense, I think, is better than people think. Uh I guess people are starting to finally realize it, but 
I could see I could see making a a, a strictly a, a Lawrence to Kirk stack with maybe a, a Pierce run back. But overall, I'm just not all that high on it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much where I am. I, I, I there you may hear me talk like I may I may throw a Nico Collins into some lineup later in the week. I actually thought he was going to have a chance at a bigger game. He did get the uh, you know he had the one big play against the against the the Chargers, and I was like, let's go. This is my stack. It's going to get there, and just kind of died out after that. For me, mostly this is a Jacksonville defense, and uh, or maybe a a Lawrence to to one of the receivers. But I, I and Cooks is fine as a run back. Everybody's fine, but I, I just I feel like there's better games to target on this slate. I, I trust Jacksonville's defense to to be able to hold uh, Texans in check. Minnesota, Chicago. Um, I think Minnesota should be fine here. I mean, they 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 were in a. <laughs> Man, those London games. They're three and one. Somehow they're three and one. And I, and I, of all the teams I've watched this year, they've been the like one of the worst of the teams that I've watched consistently. But they won those games, even the games where they looked terrible. I yeah, had the they, 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 they held on. Yes, I mean, with that amazing, amazing finish uh, yesterday or, or Sunday, they had one game where they were just totally lights out. I mean, they were amazing in that game. Um, where were they really, really good? Oh, against Green Bay. In the first game, right? Um, yeah. Then they did run into Philly, which nobody expects. And then Lions are always play these games. So the Lions, Lions should have won that game like fifty times. Yeah, I do, I do, th- I do think that Minnesota should be okay here um, uh, at home against Chicago. I, I, I don't have any confirmation though that. For, okay, so let's get to the plays. So the Bears, I don't see any confirmation of Montgomery being out uh, yet. But I presume that he, he remains out. That Herbert at fifty nine hundred is just you know going to get all the work. So uh, it's just somebody you're going to have to play. Uh, not have to play, but someone that's going to show up as 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 a good play. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Minnesota thing is weird because likewise I'm not. This is like early looks, right? I'm not really seeing these guys pop so much, but I can't imagine why they wouldn't. You know, I, I just it just feels like like easy pickings. You know, just just play. Play Thielen, play play Jefferson. You can even play Dar- Dalvin Cook. You can play all these guys, and and um, you're only worried about your run back. You want to know the truth um, from Chicago, but I don't know. I think these Minnesota guys should be in real. I mean, they're going to be in a dome, right? Or whatever. The, it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I I, I think Minnesota is, is certainly in my in my eye test, whatever out outpacing their projection. I don't know. What do you what do you think of this of this game? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. I, I so the Bears also three and one somehow. <laughs> I don't know how this is possible well, in right, modern right. NFL. Um, you have a quarterback, so so Justin Fields. No, the Bears aren't three and one. The Bears lost the Giants this past. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine. My, my, my fault. The Giants are three and one. Yeah. I get them mixed up. You can you can forgive me. You're on two this terrible one. teams that are, that are teams better. that are winning. Yeah, <laughs> like, the Bears are two and two. Um, yeah, so so if Montgomery plays, I'm I'm okay with Montgomery, and I'm okay with her. I'm into Herbert a little bit if he's not if he's not playing. Um, I don't think the Bears are gonna just do absolutely nothing offensively. I just don't think this Vikings defense is all that strong. Um, I think they've got some good pieces and some and some just they just don't they don't mesh well, and and it's it's worked out okay for them so far. At some point, I'm gonna do the thing and play Justin Fields, the guy who every week is breaking the record for the lowest po- uh, projected passing total. Uh, he had a, he had the lowest one in NFL history last week. He'll have the lowest one in NFL history again this week. Um, it's pretty amazing that you can do that and me to actually talk about him. But because of the rushing upside and because I can just just easily make it okay, if he gets a couple of those of those those bombs that he throws to Mooney every game that like usually you're going to convert one out of ten. Hey, if he keeps doing it, I'll, I'll take some shots there. But I, I don't think this is a game I want to prioritize. Uh, the Montgomery Madison thing is something I have to look look into uh, as the week goes on. I'm sorry, the Montgomery uh, Herbert. Herbert. And the, the one the one play though that I think might be this is his breakout game and we're getting him finally at the right price is Dalvin Cook. Um, I do think the Bears defense is strong, but I could see the Vikings controlling this game and Cook getting just a big, a big you know huge port, uh, market share of, of the of the of the snaps and, and about of all the plays. So I, I like Dalvin Cook this week as a guy who hasn't had that big game for us, but he's the touches are still there for the most part. And uh, I'm okay. The only problem is he's got a he's got a really good guy behind him in Madison. So Madison's always going to get a little bit of work, and he's probably going to get the touchdown upside sometimes. Like last week, he had the touchdown. Um, I, I'm into Dalvin Cook this week, and I think that I'm gonna I might even make him a priority depending on what else we find as we go along. Because I, I I think we're starting to get to the point where his price and the not not necessarily the matchups. The Bears defense is good, but the the situation could could lead him to 25 touches or something like that. And I think that you could you could see a monster monster game out from him if that was the case. 
Um, okay, so Detroit, New England. Um, I, first of all, I have an opinion on this. I, I don't know where these injuries are going to shake out, but I, with, 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 well, first of all, both teams, whether like Mac Jones plays for New England or whether any of these skill players ends up uh, playing for Detroit. But the, I do have an opinion on this game. I, I feel as though if you presume that the, that the line adjusts the injuries efficiently or whatever it is, I, I, I really like Detroit in this game. Um, like New England, New England, listen, props to them. You know what I mean? Like with no, with, with the, with the, with the fourth, with no quarterback, they took Green Bay right to the end. And listen, just when I'm just ready to, to bury Belichick, you know what I mean? He, he puts, puts out a game plan like that, you know, and somehow is like in that game, like the whole time you could say that he should have won. You know what I mean? Like it's, um, it was, it was, it's, he's, he really is the best. He as annoying as it is to say. Um, but I think coming off that game, I think it could be a, I don't know. I, I've just seen too much of this stuff and it's, I, I actually do like Detroit to win this game outright in New England. Um, I think Detroit remains underrated in spite of the fact that they just, you know, couldn't stop anybody. And the way they find ways to lose games is beyond. They do. They <laughs> definitely do. Uh, well, yes, the last game, they just got rolled. I mean, they didn't really, they weren't really in that Seattle game yet for a while. I mean, they they made, they made a run at it at the end. I guess. Um, I mean, they put up, they scored five touchdowns. Yeah, they did. But they were all when they were behind more than like two scores. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 um, yeah. So in any case, um, I, I can't comment on the fantasy implications of this game until I know who's playing. I mean, honestly, um, I think that again, if all these guys are out, I think the time, even though New England's defense is really good or whatever it is, I mean, these, these, these lions are just too cheap. You know what I mean? Like if you let these guys, these starting wide receivers go off at these prices, um, you're just going to have to play them, I think. Um, and then DeAndre Swift, I don't know if he's going to play or not, but I don't he, think Swift will play, but I do think St. Brown will play. It's my, that's my early take. Okay. Um, and, and if that's the case, then you don't have to play the Detroit's because then you can do that thing where, you can know, you pause I, it for one minute. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, yeah. sorry, man. Thank you. It's the little. Yes. Sorry. So as I was just saying, you know, like if in fact St. Brown is back, then I'm pretty sure that that Belichick will be triple teaming him you know, or whatever or whatever he does. You know what I mean? To, 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 as he is like clearly the best option for Detroit if he's healthy. So uh, maybe these guys are in play anyway. Who knows? You know, uh, if, you could, if like Shark remains out and you get these Khalif Raymonds and whatever, or Josh Reynolds or whatever, more to the point, Khalif Raymond, it's still thirty seven hundred. Maybe you can play these guys, but overall, I mean, let's call it what it is. Probably not the greatest, probably not the greatest fantasy game, unless you want to make the case that Detroit is basically the Lions themselves are just Coors Field, no matter where the games are, and everybody's in a pace up spot against them. And maybe you play New England somehow. I just, I just, I just don't see it. I don't know how to play it, but I want to play the games. I can't right? put the Lions ever on a slate. Um, a lion, the lions have scored the, the leading, they scored the most points of anybody in the NFL. They give up the most points of anybody in the NFL. They're, they're averaging a 70 for their totals. They're, they're averaging 35 a game and they're averaging giving up, giving up 35.2. Um, and yeah, we've had some games in domes and all that stuff. I'm kind of tempted to take a shot with this game. I, it, I do think Ramondre Stevenson is the, is the back that I would probably side with if I had to pick a new England back. And I actually think it's worth considering. Cause I think both these guys are actually good. It's just really hard because they really do split them up. So the upside is just feels so capped, but this is an interesting, an interesting game uh, here. So like, I, I don't know, I, I kind of want to play this game, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, it's it, it, Jacoby Myers versus Devonte Parker versus Nelson Aguilar. I, it's hard to know what to do there. It is easy to say, to say, okay, maybe we can go back to Jamal Williams again. Um but I, I know I like the game. I just don't know how to get the stacks that I want. So that's one I'm going to have to visit later in the week. I also think Hawkinson with his upside remains probably like right where he should be at 4,900. But we just saw him put up, what did he, I mean, I know that was without the receivers. What did he put up? 30, 30 something the other day? Who? Um, Hawkinson. When he was the highest scoring player. No, like, no, no. He put up 40. Yeah, 30. Yeah, like 40. Yeah. No, it was over 40. <laughs> so I'm into the idea of, of, uh, of trying to get exposure to this game. I just, I, I don't know exactly what it'll be yet. I do think Hawkinson is another guy. I've mentioned a lot of tight ends so far, by the way, which just already making me think about those, those potential double tight end builds, but I don't know if I'm going to go with it. I just, it's my first look. Um. So, so this next game, uh, so saints against, against the Seahawks. So uh, let's talk about what what's going on in new Orleans. All right. So, so there was no, my, Winston last week. There was no Michael Thomas last week. There was no Alvin Kamara last week. So what happened was they made Mark Ingram like the starter. You know, thank God it was on on a London slate. Otherwise, this would have been a 
this would have been a colossal bust, you know? Um, and, and what happened was the big star from the running game was Latavius Murray and they rewarded him by shipping him off to Denver. <laughs> um, right. So, so now, so he went to the back of the practice squad, Denver picked him up to replace Javante Williams. So now we're back to a similar situation with Kamara possibly out, you know, who knows? I really, I really don't know what to do here. You know, I don't know if Winston's playing. Don't know if Kamara's playing. Don't know if Michael Thomas is playing. And then to make it worse, I'm looking here at my early projections and, and they're showing Seattle as the top overall stack. And okay, I, I see it going into Detroit. I mean, I didn't want to do it, but am I am I really am I really doing this against the Saints? I, I, I don't know about that. So uh, I, I'll have to think about that <laughs> again. Hopefully the projection kind of a update during the course of the week where I don't have to really think about that. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. The Seattle guys happen to look really good. Um, and the Saints, I just I can't even begin to project it. Yeah, so I'm going to have to get a, get rid of a few of my early. The Saints defense is not what I thought they were going to be this year so far. Um, I It is going to obviously depend on who plays. Uh, we're getting, you know, speaking of guys we're getting to that point with, though, that are that are so cheap and and he should be back this week. Assuming that Kamara is back, I will be happy to take a shot on Kamara at sixty six hundred. I will be happy to play Michael Thomas at fifty eight hundred. I'm happy to stack the Saints side of this. Yeah. Um, I'm also happy to stack the Seahawks side of this if you want to know the truth. So this is another game on my list, um, but it's hard to know the exact plays until we know you know who's playing for the Saints. Uh, I do think Kamara, if not Kamara Ingram. Um, and then I think Thomas and Alave are both are both very live. So, um, but I'm a, I'm a little higher on, on 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 Michael Thomas than than Alave this week. But I, I think they both they both have uh, have you know big time upside. Um, and and you know if if we don't if we don't play Alave more in these games, we're going to keep wondering why we don't because they they do look for him especially on big plays. And Winston will fire it. So I, I think this is a really interesting game stack. I just hard to know without knowing who's playing for New Orleans yet. And I worry about Seattle moving the ball, but I probably should stop worrying about Seattle moving the ball because they haven't had trouble doing it so far. Uh, Geno Smith has been awesome. He's the highest rated passer in the NFL. Um, believe it or not. Of course, he is. Kind of, of course he is. Of course he is. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so I'm going to have to, but this is, this is a, another one of the games that I'm looking at. I just don't know which way I'm going to stack it this early in the week yet. So Miami against the Jets. So the reports for me, because uh, I watched the whole game, on, on Zach Wilson are extremely mixed. Okay. He was really, really awful for like 95% of the game. And then he had a really nice couple of drives at the end to cl close the game out. But I will say this about those drives. I mean, Pittsburgh really just kind of dropped the ball defensively. Every one of every one of the Jets completions was literally on the same play, just like right down the seam, right down the middle of the field. And Pittsburgh just really just didn't adjust to it. So I thought he was just okay. I just say that for his background. I'm not playing him, okay? And I'm not playing any really anybody from the Jets in this game. Um, and as far as Miami goes, I actually I actually believe that 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 Bridgewater is in play uh, with those with those two receivers. Um, I, I I think that I think that Bridgewater Hill Bridgewater uh, Waddle I think are both in play. I think Bridgewater is perfectly serviceable enough. When you got a guy, that can, two guys that can run like a hundred miles an hour to get open, I think I think he could find them, you know. So yep. uh, I, I I like I like both those guys, and if I have to run it back with a jet, um, yeah, sure, I'll play the the Wilson guy or Elijah Moore, somebody like that. Um, and yeah, I, I think that uh, I think I kind of like the Miami side of this. Yeah, I I uh, I, I am into this game. Um, uh, the, the Jets defense, I don't think is anything at all. I think this is a perfect spot for Bridgewater to get comfortable with those guys. Hard to play them with both because of the pricing. Yep. And you do have Cedric Wilson back now also. Um, they That's they true. also will find Gusecki some. So it's going to be a little bit interesting how that plays out. You also have the the, the running back, both teams playing with, a, with the running back splits. But they seemed, every time it really mattered, especially with Bridgewater, because he seemed to understand the offense a little better, they they, they not only played Mostert all the snaps, they, they went to Mostert quite a bit in that second half um, the other night. And, and it was working out pretty well for them. Um, he's the guy who helped me win the thing. So I, I, I have this as another game and I am open to both sides of it. Uh, I also think, you know, all we say about Zach Wilson, uh, you know, oh, he's it's the Wilson to Wilson, or then it's Elijah Moore, maybe, and maybe Corey right. You have three receivers that have play breaking upside that I think it's, they're all worth considering. Um, but Garrett Wilson would be number one. Davis would be number two. Moore would be number three for me. But I would go. I, I think you could go any which way, and I think there is a is a reasonable chance you're going to see some big plays from Zach Wilson, just the way he can. I mean, the way he can spin it. 
Um, so I like this game as well. I mean, it's, it's early in the week, so I'm going to have more games that I'm interested in than usual, but this is definitely one of them. Currently, I have, um, and we go to this this next game, I have a couple of thoughts on this. First from the Tampa side, uh, currently I have Leonard Fournette as the highest projected running back on the slate uh, with respect to value and all that stuff. I have him significantly ahead of anybody else, if you want to know the truth, um, given, given uh, with points per dollar and all that stuff, and he's probably going to be uber chalky. That's my, my first look. The other thing is that um, I have Tampa rated as kind of a pretty decent stack as well from the offensive side. Now, again, you know, uh, Tampa, listen, Tampa doesn't look great when they're, when they're, you know, in, in tough spots, I guess, you know, and, and for what, for whatever it looked like, I mean, Brady did put up like some yards last week. You know what I mean? Like he did throw some touchdowns and, and Evans looked pretty freaking good. Um, they just, you know, just couldn't keep pace. You know, just couldn't keep pace with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with a good Mahomes game. It's, not everybody can keep pace with a good Mahomes game, you know. Right. Um, uh, and Atlanta is certainly not not great defensively. Tampa is in in line for a good win, and I think that all these guys make a lot of sense. Um, the the interesting thing is, for, at least for me, first of all, on the other side of the Atlanta game, is 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 what is going to become of of uh, of what's his name of Tyler Algier. Okay, so with with Cordell Patterson going to injured reserve, I'm just presuming that you're going to get a, I want to say workhorse or whatever it is, but you'll get, you'll have Tyler Algiero at 4,700, who I imagine has got to be the best play. You know what I mean? But I don't know. Uh, that's what well, we'll see. We'll see where, how group thing kind of gets and coach speed kind of like gathers onto this, but you know, you give the one guy with all the work out of the game and Algier in there, I just presume 4,700 is nobody else. is even in contention for this, this, this role, I think. Well, Huntley, um, Huntley had the same amount of carries that Algier did. They oh, both did he? Had- yeah um all right so well okay. we're, we're considering that and they, and they like this they like both of them a little bit so oh, it's a little, okay. a little hard to figure out all right so it's not as, as clear then, okay which is fine yeah. uh, but i do think that obviously that the, the very natural run back is going to be is going to be kyle pitts um uh you know he always he always does look like it um uh but i i definitely think that he's in play and if you want to you want to get cute you want to go play pay up a little bit uh which is not even pay up a little bit. You play uh, London at 5,900. I guess that's okay. But I think that if you want to stack Tampa, you want to play Tampa, and you do want to get some Atlanta exposure, I think Pitts is probably the easiest, probably the, the safest way to go. But I, I like to get some more more color on this running back situation because if you do get some any word that one of these guys is, man, 4,900, you just kind of have to you probably have to do it. Yeah, they're both interesting to me. The only problem is the splits worry me a little bit. Um, and also, it's a terrible matchup. I know Tampa Bay, for the first time in a million years, got lit up on the ground the other day against the Chiefs. They haven't had like a, a big a guy have a big rushing performance against them in like literally like three years. Um, so that's another part of that matchup. Uh, I like the idea of Pitts, and I like the Brady to uh, y- y- either Godwin and Evans or probably Godwin and Evans, I think, are the safest ones. I think Godwin and Evans – Godwin alone on his own at 5,800 is just way too cheap. Um, even though you have to compete and contend with Julio Jones and, and, and Mike Evans in this matchup, I don't see any of that being a problem. I like, I like, uh, I like this game environment. It's one of the games on my list. I've got a lot of them right now, but, uh, but I like Godwin especially. And I like Pitts especially from this game. I, I would also like to say, and this should come, shouldn't come as no surprise to you. And this guy might, you know, might even play is questionable for this game, but Brady was locked into Cameron Bray in that game. Um, I know. And then he got hurt, you know, but, but, but Brady was locked into Cameron Brayton that game. So if he in fact comes back to play somehow, I mean, that's just kind of difficult to ignore, you know? Um, So, so anyway, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. So we go on to Tennessee, Washington. I I have to tell you that I almost feel like it's kind of, kind of cruel, you know, that, that, that I was, I played Derek Henry at like no ownership, both weeks, the last two weeks, he did score 25 and 25. And it just didn't, it's not quite enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's, just right, not, right. it's just not quite enough. Um, but one thing, I mean, that we're not used to is this little, these target numbers here, you know, like, like he got six targets, two games ago, five mm-hmm. targets last game, not to mm-hmm. mention 22 for 114 rushing. I mean, uh, boy, oh boy, it's kind of tough for me to fade him this week. You know, I, I, I got to keep playing him, you know? So mm-hmm. uh, I definitely like that. And aside from that, uh, I really don't have a lot in this game at all. So for me, I'll, I'm going to be stubborn. I think I'm just going to keep playing him. And, and maybe one day, 
he'll really smash and get there. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and even still, like that wouldn't have, that's not like a bad score at all. No, just no. cheap running backs that got, got did, did yeah. better. Um, I, I don't like what they're doing with Antonio Gibson and not giving him his full workload in Washington. Otherwise, I would have some interest there. Um, this game is mostly a cross off for me. I, I think that the one arguable strength for the Washington defense might be their running running defense. Um, but it doesn't stop me from having some interest in playing Derrick Henry at 8,300 on a slate that doesn't have, even though we talked about some games we like, there's not like there's been these obvious plays of this is is like an incredible spot. And this guy's too cheap for this. And he's 7,000 when he should be 9,000 or something. So I I'm open to the idea of, of, uh, of using a a Henry. And and I think my favorite run back would be McLaurin or Samuel. Um, I'm open to either, but um, not, not really in love with the game in general, to be honest with you. So, and here's the other one from last week. So I went over on McCaffrey 25 is fine, you know, not, but not, not really enough, you know, it's right. not really enough. And, uh, you know, uh, not, not when the five K guys are putting at 40. Yeah. I'm not, not particularly interested in, in, in playing much of anybody against San Francisco nowadays. Um, so I don't think I'm going to participate, uh, in, in this Carolina game. Uh, uh, I don't think on either side of the ball, uh, you like anything here? I like Jeff Wilson. Ooh, um, okay. He basically was getting all the work last night. He's getting all the work for them. This is a lot b- better of a team to, to try and use them against than, than the Rams, who were pretty much ready for it, although they were doing some some pretty cool stuff. Um, I like Jeff Wilson. Uh, it's not like a must play or anything like that or any, anybody in this game is. Um, I always like the upside for Samuel, but I don't think this is the spot where I want to use him at, at this price. Um, he was great, great Monday night. Um, and – I, I just don't see any – could there be the weird Baker come from behind type of game? Sure, I guess. I think the real thing to look at is if there's anybody to play on on Carolina, it would be DJ Moore for me. Um, had 11 targets last week. It's just going to be hard for me to play these receivers as long as Baker's quarterback. That's the truth. He's just terrible. He's he's really, really been just beyond, beyond terrible. Um, and, and maybe this game stays a little closer. You have a short week for San Francisco travel, you know, traveling I don't, I don't know um pretty interesting that all the carolina games keep in, keep going at four eastern um considering they're on the east coast but yeah this is a this is not a very interesting game to me personally so i'll tell you what's a really interesting game so yeah philly yeah, arizona so so last week you had you had marquee matchup you know one which was josh allen against against uh lamar jackson with all their rushing upside and now you get like one one a i think i mean really it, you got hurts against against kyler murray and this game has just got to explode. It just has to, you know. I, I don't know if that means fifty-one to seven for Philly. You know what I mean? Like, or thirty-eight, thirty-five in a freaking wild shootout. You know what I mean? But I don't know. You got these two types of playmakers on the field, and and both these teams just just are just. I don't know. I I think this game is going to deliver. Um, but as usual, and this is what makes it fun with these rushing quarterbacks. You don't know exactly what to do with it. You know, like. Who am I really going to play Jalen Hurts with? Um, well, I mean, give me answers. I mean, you play with AJ Brown, you play with Devontae Smith, you play it by yourself, you can play him with Goddard, you know, whatever it is, or screw it, just play Miles Sanders if you want to do that. On the Arizona side, same story. I don't know exactly what to do with the Kyler Murray play. You know, like I, I definitely like him. Um, uh, he's kind of expensive, but am I going to really play Marquise Brown at seventy two hundred? I, I don't think so. Maybe may, now what what happened with Rondell Moore last week? Did he get did he get five targets um, in his time back? Maybe maybe that's the idea. You play some Phillies, you play Rondell Moore. I don't know. It's one of those games where I think it can deliver, but I just don't know where the, who's going to be making the deliveries. Yeah, the pro. So I, I I mean this is clearly the game I, I want to stack. The problem with Philly is they've been able to all run all over everybody. I mean, right. we get a week last week where they where they're down Boston Scott. They're playing Jacksonville, who's been stopping everybody. And they still run for what? I mean, but they ran for three touchdowns between, uh, yeah, three touchdowns between Sanders and uh, Gainwell alone. Didn't Hertz have another one as well? Um, yeah, he ran for one as well. So four rushing touchdowns last week. They've run for what did they run for? Like eleven touchdowns already? No, more than that. Maybe even more. Um, and then they also play fast. So you want things on the Arizona side. Uh, I'm okay with Hollywood Brown. They found a connection there a little bit and he's looked really good the last couple of weeks, but I, it's, it's a lot to pay for him. 
Um, I have a little more interest in Rondale more than maybe other people will. I think he's going to end up getting more and more of that work, even with AJ Green coming back probably. Um, but it's it, that, that's the tricky part. And and my favorite play in this game is those for. I mean, Arizona can't stop anything over the middle at all, and they haven't been able to for years. So it feels like a very good week for Goddard. Um, again, and more tight ends for me. Uh, if Boston Scott is out again, I will be open to Miles Sanders, which, again, I came on to very end last week, and I mentioned on our show, Miles Sanders had his best week in maybe three years. Um, and then the other side of it is Philly has also had some – it's not trouble because it's a really game flow, but – could, could you consider a James Connor? So I'm, I'm, st- I'm still confused at who I want to play for Arizona. Um, I'm not confused about uh, trying to get it overexposed to Goddard, AJ Brown, Devonte Smith, and possibly Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts. But on Arizona, outside of Kyler, it's really hard for me to know who I really want. Maybe I would just go with the Marquise Brown, or I would go with the really skinny stack and hope you get the big play out of Rondell Moore. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, uh, a sort of reverse revenge for Zach Ertz either. So I like both tight ends in this game is probably my two favorite plays, but I like the game as a whole. And I think, it, you know, we've seen the Philly games go kind of nuts. So, and, and this could be another one to, uh, especially, especially if Arizona is able to stop at least a little bit of the run, make Philly throw the ball a little bit more. You could see a big game from those passing uh, from those quarterbacks from, uh, so, from Hertz. So this last game is a really, really big game. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, yeah. not, not so much fantasy wise, I don't think, but we'll, we'll see. But I want to talk, this is, we talked about this going into last night or after last night's game. I mean, the, the, Ra- the Rams have, we, we listen, you win the Super Bowl, this is what happens. I mean, you get a really, really tough schedule, right? And that's what happens. That's why it makes the NFL so awesome. And, and, and they have a really tough schedule all year. And, and this is a game that they, they this is the game they really need. You know, like, listen, next, next week they're home against Carolina. I presume they can take care of business and then they go into the bye, right? Uh, right. So they, re- this is a game that is a tr- tr- tough game considering how well the Dallas's defense is playing and how well their offensive line can be or whatever it is. Um, but they got to take care of this somehow, the Rams, you know, they're, they're only like a four point favorite. And if you told it was beginning of the year, if I told you to be no, no Prescott, I would think the Rams would be like seven or eight or whatever it is. Oh, I, could have, I think it could have been like 10 or 11. Right. right. But, but, yeah. but Dallas has brought it, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and the, and, and so I think that the, um, I think that the Rams, are, I think the Rams are going to play well. Um, it could be from a fantasy perspective, nobody's really standing out for me, um, mm-hmm. except for both tight ends. I, I like both tight ends in this game. I like Schultz oh, I feel and I like Higby. I like both of them. I think those are two of my top three tight ends in the slate, actually, both coming from that game. Um, and the only th- other thing I will say is that given the way Dallas can bring presser, I do think that that Cup can they can they can run some plays for him. I think Cup could smash, you know, what I mean? you know what I mean? At, He's, I don't think people are going to play him because he's really expensive. Um, yeah. Um, I think he could smash and break the slate at the end of the day. Um, he's going to be like zero owned and it's probably not the greatest, you know, cash play or anything like that. But I don't know. I just, I just got a feeling that, that, that he's got a shot, but from a projection perspective and from, you know, fantasy, I, I do like both tight ends a lot. And I just think it's going to be an awesome football game. Yeah, I, I I think it's a it's a huge game, obviously, uh, especially for the Rams more yep. so than the Cowboys. Yep. Um, and I am going to uh, to try to to enjoy it without probably doing much from a fantasy perspective. But I like what you mentioned, and it just gets me back to that point. I have a ton of I really like Higby, especially. Um, there's some some of these tight ends in the 4K range. Like I mean, take, Higby had 14 targets last night, or yeah, Monday night, like. That that kind of stuff can happen for for him. They they'll run a lot. He's like their net. He's their number. He's their receiver too, uh, right now. So, I, I I'm on board with uh with with maybe some Higby and may and I'm and I'm open to Schultz as well. Um, I I just uh I I, I like the I like the it's gonna be a fun game. I'm just not interested in it very much for DFS. So, uh, other than the Arizona Philadelphia game, all my games are morning games. I have my priority is Philadelphia Arizona followed by the Chargers, Browns, Miami, and the Jets, then Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Seattle, New Orleans, Detroit, New England. But I'm willing to mix those around. It's Tuesday after, Tuesday uh, morning here. So uh, some of the hi- highlighted plays that I really like are, are a lot of tight ends, Joku, Higby, Goddard, Ertz. Um, I like at, at running back. I really like Cook this week. Um, I like Wilson. I like Mostert. Uh, if I like Fournette. Um, I like Pitts. I like Michael Thomas. I like Godwin. Those are sort of some price point standing outs for me uh, this week. But 
again, it's very early in the week, so it's hard to know exactly what we're going to do, but it's going to be hard to ignore that Philadelphia Arizona game. Well, what I will also say, I mean, when you uh, def- on, on defenses, it's a really interesting week because when I like first run my defenses, like some of the, some of the teams that are point coming up as like a good point per dollar play are plays that are really fishy. I mean, looking, you know, like I'm getting like Dallas, like Pittsburgh, right. Against Buffalo, um, the bears against the Vikings. You know, these are, these are some tough teams to play. I think the team that people are going to end up playing makes, I think the dolphins at 3,200 against the jets. I think that makes some sense. I have the mm-hmm. Titans. Who, who do the Titans play this week? Um, Titans are playing Washington. Yeah, Titans. I like that. So I think those are my two favorites. Uh, would probably be the Dolphins and the Titans as far as defense goes. Yeah, if you're spending up a little bit more, I, I'm good with those two. Um, the slightly cheaper ones. Um, the Seahawks, I think, are very legitimate against, uh, against Jameis. I think Dallas against the Rams would be my next. So that's pretty much what I got. Okay, uh, I right. guess that will do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll put this up soon and uh, stay tuned for more content. Yeah, good luck, everybody. All right, I'll put this up right away. Thanks, buddy. Take it easy.